Hey guys, Dave Boyce here, the host of the Russell Center Podcast, and this is the year-end best... <laughs> what in the hell are you doing here? Ha <laughs> ha! Guess who? That's right, it's me, Damien Cage. That's Cage with a K. The greatest professional wrestling manager no one's ever heard of. And I have some big news. You talk about the best of 2014? Well, then you need to talk about Damien Cage, the greatest hashtag of 2014. We want Cage. We want Cage. Broadcasting live from Halifax, Nova Scotia, this is the Wrestle Center Podcast. Hey guys, Dave Boys here. Uh, we are the Wrestle Center Podcast. As always, I'm with Justin Parsons Cody. We are with uh, Paul Fotley. Oh, I almost screwed that one up already. Oh, <laughs> be and, a, we have a, be a podcast. <laughs> and we have a special guest with us tonight, Dylan Sharp. Hey, you doing, Dylan? Guys. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Uh, Dylan, we're going to ask you a few questions here. Uh, you're a big part of Russell Center. Uh, but uh, when did you begin? When did you begin uh, your career in wrestling? Wrestling, it was 2009. Or no, 2008 is when I started training and had my first match. I was 16, actually. Wow. And from there, it's just it's just grown. Who, who, who uh, trained you? Uh, uh, Gary Williams was the one that trained me. Yeah, I went through the Wild Man Academy, and I can't say better things about him. I know Justin's going through his training school and can testify. He'll sit there. He'll help you with anything you need help with. He'll pull you aside, and he still does to this day for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you started at 16. That's young. <clears throat> <laughs> so, like, that might be a, um, a shock to some of the newer fans. They may think you're a, a newcomer, but you, you're a veteran, really. I mean, you're looking at, uh, help me do the math here, eight eight years? No. Nope. Am I wrong? <laughs> 2000, oh, 2008. Oh, question. How old is Dylan Sharp? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 22. 22. I, I'm 22 oh, this year. I swear, I thought you were 16 now. <laughs> <laughs> were you always a fan of wrestling growing up? Pardon? Were you always a fan of wrestling growing up? I, I've been a fan since I was two. Yeah, I know it's cliche to say every wrestler says it. They've been a fan pretty much forever, but I've got into it because of my family, and family is big for me. Yeah, so I, I've, it's just one thing that I've always had, able to sit there and watch with my family. That's cool. Probably the same with you guys too. Right? You guys started being fans young. I was a fan because uh, my dad watched it. And oh, really? Yeah, my dad watched it. So I grew up watching it. And then when it went into, like, the Attitude Era of all wrestling, he kind of fell out of it. Yeah. And then I I continued on. And then when it went into, like, the, the – what would we call it? The PG Era now? Yeah. Um, when it first happened, started happening, I disconnected for at least five years. Just wasn't a fan of it. Hey, and well, started, you're, you're, you're missing an era. You're missing the Ruthless Aggression Era. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, but when the, when the PG era started, that was it for me. I couldn't I couldn't take it anymore. I I also failed to say and tell Dylan uh, if you swear during a podcast, you have to buy a Dylan Sharp T-shirt. So I'll just let you know. <laughs> hey, I got one. Hey, speaking of that, hey Paul, I got it for you. Right oh, here. there you go. Right here. My my goal is by the end of this podcast to uh, have purchased enough Dylan Sharp shirts and stocking stuffers for Christmas this year. <laughs> he's going to need an extra large to fit over his dad's sweater he's wearing. <laughs> Just oh, think I of the fatherly advice I could dole out to your daughter, Dave. <laughs> uh, so, Dylan, uh, you train with Gary Williams. Uh, can you remember your first show? Uh, you took my question. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me... Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I want to know what your I want to know what your first show was, where it was, when it was, um, who you were facing. My first show was, let's see, see, this is kind of iffy because I started training 
before Gary per se, okay. but it wasn't with like the most reputable person. I'm okay. not going to name names because, well, I don't want to shoot anybody down for the most part. Right. But uh, my first match, I'll be the first one to admit I was not ready for it, and I should <laughs> not have been out there. As but most of us no, probably are. I started that training in uh, uh, in September of 2008, and I had my first match in November 8th of that same year. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, that's and real it, fast. Yeah, it was. Like, I was not ready at all. I knew how to do the basics for the most part. But it was up in uh, DeBert. Up in DeBert, Nova Scotia. Not... Oh, burn, burn burner. A <laughs> couple minutes from uh, Truro. Yeah. And uh, it was against The Answer at the time. Oh, and okay. I know you're talking it, about, yeah. I wasn't too happy with it, simply, be, like, looking back on it, because, I, like I said, I wasn't ready. And I improved so much, and I'm happy I did, because <laughs> if I didn't, I wouldn't be sitting where I am today. Was that uh, with UCW? No, that was with – it was a uh, UCW and uh, New Breed Cross show. Okay. Like, they ran a cross-promoted show. So it was on that one. Nice. Cool. Um, so fast forward, uh, this year you uh, became part of the roster of Russell Center. Um, yep. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of the main guys on Volt Each. The storyline for most of the year has been around you and your dealings with uh, Tyler and uh, Heel Faction, I guess. Um, what's your experience with Russell Center? See, it's funny. You say story it's not a story happens there with me is true i have to fight new tooth and nail for what i even get like there's been points where i was left off shows because i just don't get along with tyler like straight up i don't get along with tyler and i don't like him he doesn't like me but the experience it's been an eye opener mm -hmm. i've been told from the start that wrestling there's people out there that are just in it for themselves and there's people that are in it for the boys. And I've definitely met quite a few of each person and we'll just leave it at it. It's been an experience for sure without actually getting into too much detail. This is a common occurrence too in our podcast. Paul will just up and leave us. <laughs> yeah, Paul. <laughs> kind of a thing, you know. <laughs> it's his voice is, hey, there it is. Connection. Um, is, is this woman watching Gilmore Girls or something? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the point of Gilmore Girls, though, where Lorelai is a shitty parent and Rory is looking okay. So, <laughs> coming along. Just the fact that you know that. <laughs> They're both really attractive. I mean, if you watch that show on mute, you can... Anyways. I don't on mute. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> um... I tap out. I got a. I got another question. Uh, favorite match that I've had or that I've seen that you've had. Favorite match that I've had. One that you just came out. Maybe the crowd was hot, or everything went smoothly, or you know. Hmm. I've had a match. It was. <clears throat> when was it? I want to say it was last year. So I want to say it was. October or so of 2013 and it was against Ryan Rogan ah. and it was in Spryfield which is where I'm from actually I can pretty much see the arena from my house <laughs> and we went out there and the crowd was hot as they always are I mean not as hot as not as hot as the Wrestle Center crowd but uh they they were hot and everything just went smoothly out there and it was a blast. That's good, man. Did you win? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he had he had a manager, and I was almost I almost won, but his manager got involved, and I got fired from UCW for a bit because of it. Those damn managers. <laughs> What's it like working with Chuck? <laughs> Let's that. Uh, no, no, I'll. Oh, I, I, now, the only reason why I ask, because before I get into this whole business, 
um, I used to be a fan and I used to go to UCW shows. And I remember seeing you come out and you were young and I thought you, you were, had great talent. So that's where I first seen you working with yeah. UCW. So uh, as, a, as a company, I'm, I mean, it's a legit question. How, how was your experience with them guys? Uh, at the start, it wasn't too bad. I mean, being from Spryfield, I've known Chuck and my whole family has since I was a kid. Even before that, my family knew him. So that's how I kind of got started is knowing him. Mm -hmm. And for that to start, I've had my rocky moments. And then it started to go perfectly fine. And then this past year, since I started at Wrestle Center, he doesn't seem to like it so much that I'm kind of elevating myself. And he feels that I'm doing it above him. Okay. And there's been some animosity between us. Like we've gotten to plenty of arguments over stuff on tours that he had. I've seen and one of them. Yeah, Justin was there for one of them, and <laughs> like that's not, it's not like you could walk away from it either because it was loud. So <laughs> it was loud, and I'll be the first one to admit it was completely unprofessional of me. And I apologize to anybody who was there to actually have to witness it. But it happens sometimes. I mean. Uh, me being so young, I'm used to being walked all over or people trying to, and I just, I can't stand it anymore. Right. I've been bullied my entire life, and I'm not going to let it go again. What was it like taking uh, Brody Steele's uh, choke slam? Not once, but twice. <laughs> my back is still sore. <laughs> <laughs> that that man is big. Oh. I mean, we I'm him. not going to back down from a fight, but that probably wasn't my smartest thing. <laughs> Well, moving into 2015, um, what are your goals? Where do you see yourself um, some, uh, next year? What, what are your goals? Well, there's a saying going around, and actually Austin says it a lot. If you're not in this business... <laughs> Jesus. That's right. It's a twofer. <laughs> oh, you're, put, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> what did I miss? Um, repeat your question. Repeat your question for Justin. Uh, I was talking about uh, you know aiming for titles in 2015 in Russell Center. Uh, there's been some talk of uh, maybe some tag team belts, the you know IHC 3PO titles or whatever, uh, coming to Russell Center. And so I was just asking Dylan, uh, you know we've got a choice on the roster in a perfect world. Who's his tag team partner? More importantly, what's the tag name? Oh. I do love me a good tag team name. I love tag teams. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of guys that I would pick. I think first off the top of my head is Double XL, Steve Arsena, obviously. I mean, I've known Steve since I started in this business, and me and him are very close friends. I mean, we have our arguments, but what friends don't? But get married. We, <laughs> Steve would be for sure and uh, tag name for that Sharp, Sharp Wang Sharp Wang there you go every tag team that he's going to be mentioned in yeah. is going to be something Wang yeah. <laughs> and the other the other one is uh, <laughs> the other one would be Shane Stevens I think Shane Stevens and I that's who I was thinking we yeah. have very similar styles. We both enjoy the same type of wrestling. So I think we could come up with a lot of moves that fans would absolutely love to see. Yeah. And a name. You, you already gave a sharp wing. I'm not going to put you on the spot for a second. <laughs> no, no. no. I, uh, here, I'll go with Simpsons reference. We'll be the B sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dylan, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, look forward to you in Russell Center in 2015. Uh, happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, same with every, every Russell Center fan out there. And uh, make sure Paul gets that T-shirt for Christmas. <laughs> Two. <laughs> I swore twice. <laughs> hey, I'm sure you'll swear more. I have to watch this over again. Probably. <laughs> All right, man. I have them in the mail, and I accept PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for joining us, man. See you later, brother. Okay. That was a Dylan Sharp. And yeah, I think he's 
It seems disconnected. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, guys. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, joining us. I can't wait to get the. I can't wait to have it like a regular occurrence that we have like every week or every couple of weeks. We have a, another wrestler on. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking wait, of. Where do we have Dean Fisk? Dave's gonna mark out. That's my dream right there. An <laughs> hour. Jackson Fury exclusive. So you could have the Dean Fisk one. It'll just be an hour of him grunting. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, wrestlers coming on our podcast, next week, it is official. Steve Arsenal, Double XL, is coming on for a full hour for us three monkeys to ask him a bunch of questions. A full hour. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. So, anyway, uh, with that said, we asked the fans of Wrestle Center to. Uh, vote on some categories for the best of awards for 2014. They did. I tallied the results. You guys don't know. There's probably a lot of ballots you had to tally. That <laughs> probably <laughs> took you all day. <laughs> it did take me a while. You know. <laughs> some some guy I forget who it was uh, voted uh, one category per day. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if he was thinking good and hard, but every day I get a message from him. And for this award, yes, it, 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 you had to think about it. To <laughs> Apparently. Um, so we will start. You guys might be surprised with some of that. Them. Apple juice that you're drinking, or is that like a full? Okay. I juice. thought that was like whiskey for a minute. It's like that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's we, not just foolish. You know, you know what? I do have to drink when I'm on these podcasts. I got, I, I got to deal with you, so it's the only way I can get through it. <laughs> that's what my girlfriend tells me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> we will begin with um, some of the lighter ones. The funniest moment of the year. Okay. What do you guys think won? Uh, the Cabana Greaser yeah. segment. Hands down. Colt Cabana yeah. emptying James Carr's funniest moment of the year. That's one of the funniest moments in wrestling I can remember. You know, in, in wrestling in general. That was a good, that was really well done. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, in any promotion, that stands out to be definitely one of the funniest. I had to produce all those things, so it was kind of fun on my part to... Well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't hard for you to find extra small condoms, so... No, no, I just uh, went over to Paul's house, and there they were. Oh, <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, I was going to make fun of your daughter's boyfriend with that one, but no, no. I uh, want to spare, but I don't want to buy another Dylan Sharp t-shirt, so... There was actually a couple items that weren't brought out of his pocket, so maybe someday I will... Oh, you know what, some that'll of the be, other... Yeah, that'll be in the Dave Voice memoirs. <laughs> some of the, Who wants uh, the memoir? Some of the items that never made it out of his pocket. Uh, some runner-up, and there's some good ones. Uh, the Halloween, ha Halloween hijinks video. Yep, yep. With, uh, James Carr and Tommy Starr swapping uh, roles. Uh, James Carr uh, interacting with the three students backstage on Voltage. So, Justin... <laughs> Someone voted for that. <laughs> I had to check to make sure it wasn't Justin was it, that voted. Was, Justin, <laughs> was, it, awesome. was it funny or was the idea of Justin being a wrestler just that laughable to Wrestle Center fans? I thought, Bam, I thought it was hilarious when James uh, called all the different names he came up and I wanted to ask Justin, was that all ad lib or was that take five, take six? That on uh, honestly, it was we went into like I said, you 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 asked with him. And you can have everything that you want to do in your mind and say, I'm going to be you know, up and bright. And he just comes running in and you can't, you, you feel like I'm, I'm six foot two. I think he's like five foot eight or nine or something. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I feel so small compared to him when he's, when he's in front of the camera, he just explodes. Um, that was, that was all on spot. Like that was just. It was really funny. He said it the, he, he said it the first time. And then when the cameras cut for a second, he's like. I was like, you have to use that. As much yeah. as I hate it, he yeah. had he had to use. What, it. what were the names? Remind everybody. No, uh, no. no. Shrek. <laughs> um, Beardy. You know, Shrek, the little man and big man, wasn't it? No, no, no. I was, Beardy. I can't remember. I yeah, it was, uh, Shrek, Beardy, and Muscles. 
Muscle. I'll have to go back to the archives and uh, on the yeah. Voltage Network. I think uh, it was available for nine ninety nine and watch them. <laughs> Uh, another runner-up uh, got vote. Um, was, we had this many votes that there yeah. are runner-ups. Yeah. Good God. Uh, the the uh, Michael Elgin shoving cheeseburgers and Marcus How Burke smoke. Respectful. Marcus <laughs> Burke has made a lifestyle choice to respect and honor wrestlers or wrestlers, <laughs> fucking animals. <laughs> and Michael Elgin, that's a third shirt. <laughs> Uh, actually, I still have another one, too. Uh, Colt Cabana sealing up referee Dave Lowe in the ring got a vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, my nights, were made. I, I, my nights were made. I made a runner-up spot. I, didn't, well, I wasn't even yeah. in the category originally, so. That's impressive. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, that was it. The funniest moment of the year. Colt Cabana emptying James Carr's pocket. Sweet. Done. The oh, my God moment of the year. I will tell you now, one thing got every vote. <laughs> has it aired on Voltage yet? There is, yeah. There is oh. no, there is no runner-up. It was a landslide. AJ Styles appearing at the end of the card. Okay, fair enough. I, in my like, I definitely was. It was awesome to see that, but I really think that that whole ladder match should have took that, but. The anticipation um, of, because uh, there was only three of us that knew about it. Yeah. Uh, and the only reason why I knew about it was because um, I make the graphics for them, and they wanted the poster up right away that night when I got home. So they let me in on the, on the secret that AJ was coming. Uh, and then I also had to know because the same night, Christopher Daniels' flight was late, and I may have had to ring announce a different – match at the end, AJ. So uh, I knew about it, of course, Jason and Tyler, and then um, Justin, who had to go get him. I didn't, I, didn't find out, I didn't find out until a half hour before I had to go get him. Yeah, it was so he, uh, Jason, Jason uh, messaged me a couple, a couple days before the show, and he's like, I really have something important for you to do, but I can't tell you yet, but I need you to be free to go do something. I was like, all right, well, you know, I do the music, but like, we'll get somebody else to sit on the table when I go do whatever this is. And um, <laughs> I went when I when I grabbed Daniels because he came in maybe an hour after the show started. Grabbed Daniels from the airport, took home, took off back. He was super cool. He was like, "How fast can you get me there?" Yeah. So I may have broken the speed limit. And I may have ran three red lights to get him to the show on time. There are only like five people watch this, and I'm sure none of them are cops. So you're yeah, fine. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that there's no cops. Um, and <laughs> then this? also, when I went to go get AJ, we were coming back, and I asked him if it was cool because I had to get him there in time. And it, I actually, if I didn't run, I ran three light lights with each with each talent. If I didn't run the three red lights with uh, Styles, he wouldn't have been able to make that entrance. But it was so well done because in this day day of uh, social media. Like, if just one person seen them, it, they would just, you know, tweet. Funny thing. One fan mentioned after the show he thought he'd seen AJ Styles at a gas station getting something, snacks or something like that. But he thought, no, it couldn't be him. Right, because he wasn't advertised. He wasn't advertised, right? But the, it, was, it was super close. Like, that fan could have said something, and the whole surprise could have been blown. But <laughs> we should do that before the next Wrestle Center show. Should just take to Twitter and be like, oh, I'm pretty sure I saw Chris Jericho in a Sobeys yeah. up on Why is Hulk Hogan at the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> CM Punk fucking just walked by me and just... <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, to me, it it speaks volumes uh, for Russell Center to take that big of a chance, not advertising that big of a star, in order to give that their fans that, oh my God, which is lacking in wrestling now. There's yeah. no surprises. There's hardly any surprises. Everyone knew Sting was debuting on the brand yeah, that cannot be named. Everyone knew yeah, it was happening. There were signs but, of the but, but how many people, like, I, even though I knew it was happening, I was still glued to that screen. Yeah. Well, I was sitting there going, oh, my God, it's coming, it's coming. I can't wait. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Where you the got, hell is he? you got that same look on your face at night with your wife, don't you? <laughs> you, you leave Mrs. Boyce out of this. She don't is. bring up. <laughs> Um, feud of the year. 
Feud of the year. You may be surprised. J.P. Sims versus heel section. Heel section? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But J.P. Sims versus heel faction really? won Feud of the Year. It was good. Like, I mean, you know, it, uh, you it said, was. You know, step back from an actual like storytelling perspective. Like, it was it was interesting. Like, they, you know, they bloodied him up. They, you know, messed around with his sister, broke his brother's neck. Like, cost, whatever him, it was. cost him a title. Yeah. Was, oh yeah, for sure. It, it, it definitely was. Uh, also, um, and also led to the great Titus Sims match to settle the score, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which also got runner up. J.P. Sims versus Titus alone. Really? So, yeah. Well, no, it definitely wasn't. Now that Paul brought it up, that you know, I didn't step back and look at it from that point of view. Um, no, for sure, it makes total sense. I just uh, once the fans see the breast of the double XL and greaser feud, I think it would be a tie because Which, yeah, and and they were uh, runner up as well. Uh, Marcus yeah. Marcus Burke and. Um, or no, sorry, it was a double XL and James Carr. Yeah. No, but yeah, Paul made a good point. That whole thing, I forgot. You know what? It's been such a year. I forgot about the whole sister angle and the brother. Yeah. And... It played out for sorry, not played out. The duration of it was over several months. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was, it's easy to kind of forget some of the small nuances of it. Yeah. And you know, the JP Sims and Tyler and Tyler. Plus Sims. that full and one award. Matt, 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 <laughs> I'm Matt award winner now. Oh, we I'm, act, the I'm actually going to print off a award sheet. So the, the first show we go to in March, I'll, we'll hand them out. Here you go, guys. Hopefully there's a show before March. Hope so. We're trying. Um, fan favorite of the year. By a landslide. Suave. No. Double, oh, right. Sorry. I don't, even, I don't even know I went there. Yeah. Double XL. Fan favorite of the year. That song is so catchy. Did anybody get a runner-up? Like yep. two, two runner-ups. Oh, okay. Lincoln Steen. Yeah. <laughs> Steen Nation appeared twice. Teenagers, <laughs> baby. Teenagers <laughs> from Mars, and we don't care. Teenagers from Mars. And Young he is a did. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Young also got a nod or two. Nice. nice. Oh. But Double XL uh, ran away with that one. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I don't know why. I thought Suave for a second, and then, yeah, it makes total sense. <laughs> that double XL. Chris Cass and I just voted for Double XL in our under or, uh, Double XL under ruse, mm -hmm. uh every day. So I think that's what kind of helped put it over the edge. He needs, he needs to get those made. He needs to get those yeah. made. Yeah, see, it's going to happen. We're going to hire the uh, merchandising company for men's underwear based solely around Wrestle Center wrestlers. It's going to be good. Print yeah. money. Just contact Print. the guy that made his trunks and just yeah. shoot them off. Uh, someone on their uh, WWE 2K15. Yeah, well I think they use Heath Slater's face. It'll <laughs> <laughs> um, he used every man. But the trunks yeah. were dead on. And yeah. You can the new t shirt download um, uh, graphics. Mm -hmm. And they downloaded the actual double XL army yeah. graphic that's on his shirt. No. Put Wrestle Center on the back. That's awesome. Dedication. It's really well done. Yep. And they even like made sure that his finishers and his signature moves were all the ones that he does. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it just sucks that when he does the uh, from the ground up to the apron and kicks the guy. It's too bad that you couldn't create him just to do like a little pose for a second as he does at the shows. But it was really well done. Um, yeah, huge props to that fan. And, that and the fan stuff. who did it, you can download the music as well and throw that in there too. Can you download the music? Yep. I didn't know you could. Somebody, yeah, somebody posted on the Facebook page, I think. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, maybe someday someone will make one of uh, Justin Parsons Cody. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be me, but. <laughs> yeah. You guys play. Uh... I got 2K15, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got 14, 13, and 12. Yeah. Uh, Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. I'm still on No Mercy, to be honest. I'm on Xbox. I can't play with it. Villain of the Year. Did you say Sorry. Dylan of the Year or Villain of the Year? <laughs> Dylan of the Year. <laughs> Dylan of the Year. Dean <laughs> Fisk. Villain. Is it Dean Fisk? This is the one that I know is the Villain of the Year. Do you? Well, okay, this is the one that I, I, I think I did. 
Mark, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> Who do you think? You're thinking Marcus Burke. I, I, I'll go with J.P. Sims based on, I assume it's the hardcore fans that were voting. Chris Daniel. No. Tyler. There, people voted for Heel Faction as a whole. Matt Bullitt, a two-time <laughs> two <laughs> award winner. <laughs> and Tyler, too. <laughs> and Tyler, uh, and... Yes, and Heel Faction wow. beat out Marcus Burke. Marcus Burke was next. Wait. I'm pretty sure Marcus is going to want to say, have something to say. He's going to, he's definitely going to want to say something about that. That could, that could be Marcus Burke's uh, face turn. He could come up to the ring and 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 challenge heel back. <laughs> Yell vegan four times. <laughs> Brody Steele also got a nod or two. Um, if anybody hasn't done it yet, he uh, he posted some videos this week up on our uh, on the Facebook page. Excuse me of uh, some World of Sport matches. Awesome. Highly, highly recommend going to watch that and then uh, continuing to delve deeper into it through YouTube. It's uh, it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Yep. Nice. I agree. I watched yeah. this. Um, yeah. Huge fan. So. Yeah. Um, Ron Hutchinson Award for Most Improved. Now, Ron Hutchinson uh, actually what wrote about, on Facebook about the award. What about um, Good Guy of the Year? New guy? We didn't do yep. double, double XL, XL, one good guy of the year. Oh, my God. Oh, I thought you said new guy of the year. <laughs> oh. It's been a long day, okay? No, it hasn't. It well, has. We're in the um, shore office. Um, Ron <laughs> Hutchinson wrote, uh, my friends at Russell Center have a new podcast, that would be us, uh, are asking fans to vote on their year in awards. One of the categories is the Ron Hutchinson Award for Most Improved Wrestler. I am honored, flattered, and looking forward to seeing who the fans think is the promotion's most improved. Thank you to the classy crew at Russell Center. Yeah. With that said, most improved. I'm excited Please. for this one. Me. Who do you think? I I really want Nick Diggs. My heart says the digger, but uh, I don't know. If if he went with the gimmick idea that I had for him, where he came out with shovels to give to the fans, <laughs> so that the fans would be the diggers, I yes. think he would win hands down. But yes, uh, nothing safer than giving those fans shovels. Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> trust, it's fine. Oh my god! Most improved, the Ron Hutchinson Award. I I said my piece, Justin. It's on you. Greaser James Carr. Hey. Oh. Hey. <laughs> wow, James Carr, who uh, I believe was in the training sessions with them as well. So, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. you were there. Yeah. Uh, Runner-up, his buddy Tommy Starr. Ooh. Oh, I have lost all respect for our fans. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Tommy Starr would have got my vote. Really? I think so. I but Greaser James Carr, uh, the first recipient of the Ron Hutchinson Award. For most improved. Nice. He'll probably say he was good all along, but <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to improve. All right. That brings us to the big three. We have more? We have three left. Oh, Match yeah. We are chugging along. <laughs> Awards. We only had seven shows. <laughs> <laughs> the best podcast over. goes to. <laughs> yes, not us. Such I think Art of Wrestling beat us this week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. International Wrestler of the Year. We had six nominees. International Wrestler of the Year. Out of those six. Uh, my head says Christopher Daniels, but my heart says Petey Williams. Don't ever listen to your heart, kids. Don't ever <laughs> listen to your heart. Cole Savannah. Well, Petey Williams never got one vote. I'll let you know. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, I can forgive the Tommy Starr thing because he's actually somewhat of a nice human being behind the curtain. Somewhat. But Petey Williams, come on. Uh, the winner, International uh, Wrestler of the Year, AJ Styles. I'm sure Brody Steele didn't vote. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Move it on. We can, we, can let, we can let Brody call in one day. Chug it along. Yeah, we can let Brody call in one day, and that'd he can a, say his piece. That'd be a great guest, Brody Steele. Yeah. Think he'll do it? No. I think he would. Yeah. I have just one question. Why are you so amazing? Thank you very much. Moving on. 
<laughs> actually, as soon as he called in, I would exit the conversation until he was done because, well, you seen what he did to me last time I was in the ring with him. I don't want to. You took your glasses off though, dude. Clearly got a little bit of respect for you. I guess. Yeah. Uh, runner up, Christopher Daniels. <laughs> he at least choked you out. He slapped and face palmed the other two. Like. <laughs> Oh, we're still talking about Brody. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So we're not talking about Brody's thoughts. We're talking about what he... I'm actually crying. He slapped for him, guys. That was so good. You know what? Yeah, okay. At least, at least, I was, at least he... You got uh... choked out like a man. Like, I'll give you... <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry. Moving on. Uh, Colt Cabana also got a couple votes, so... Good. Oh, good. AJ Styles is the winner, International Wrestler of the Year. Nice. Um... Match of the year. Got to involve a ladder. Come on. Has to involve a ladder. Has to involve a ladder. Julian Young versus Marcus Burke in the finals. Uh, ladder match. Match of the year. If that wasn't match of the year, I would question every fan out there. <laughs> like, come on. That was. Uh, other matches got votes, though. What else? Uh, Runner-up was uh, Marcus Burke again versus Double XL. Well, that the... was that was classic there too. Yep. Yeah. And uh, AJ Styles versus Crystal Daniels got a match, got a vote. Got a match. Got a, got a match. match. Yeah, they got a match. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Marcus Burke, Julian Young, ladder match, hands down, match of the year. Right. So congrats to them guys. I'm sure they're watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> We're That's super big in New Brunswick. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus cool. Park, I want you on the podcast as well. That brings us to our last award, Wrestler of the Year, the big one. What do you think? I'm not commenting on this one. <laughs> wrestler of the Year. We didn't give nominees. We just said the whole roster. Yeah. We had a winner and two runner-ups. I gotta think it's it's double XL. I yeah. Wrestle of the year, double XL. Yeah. So congratulations, Steve. Most popular wrestler of the year and wrestler of the year. So he's doing something right. Two awards means two bonus checks from this podcast. So <laughs> look for that in the mail. <laughs> we'll sell uh, Justin's uh, flag back there. Hey. That, that Italian flag, right? It's not Italian. It's not Italian. It's green, <laughs> white, and pink. It's the old Republic of Newfoundland flag. Oh, I thought that was red and it was just old and faded. No, <laughs> sir. That we're the, we the only flag in the world that has pink in it, actually. Really? Is that yeah. true? I'm right. going gonna, gonna to look into that. For I'm a making time. a note now. Google that. <laughs> There's there's purple in the Spanish flag. Anyways, that's a whole other podcast we could get into. <laughs> Who was uh, okay? Double, so double XL. XL. I, I get back. Congratulations, rest of the year. Your fans voted. Uh, runner up, Marcus Burke. Yeah. We said there was two runner ups though. Yep, Titus. Hey, Titus. Oh. Which I was. I'm a huge Titus fan. So. Oh, don't be wrong. Wicked in the ring. I've the seen other time him. I saw him lay out Dylan Sharp, you, you had my heart, you know. <laughs> I love his finishing move. It is pretty sweet. It is. Um, before uh, we end it, I forgot to uh, get Dylan to do this. We talked about it before. Uh, get him, you know, follow him on Facebook, Dylan oh. Sharp. And uh, Twitter at Dylan Sharp 92. Yep. At Dylan, at Dylan under underscore. Okay. Yeah, at Dil so it's at Dylan underscore sharp ninety two. Yeah, just give him a look. Give him uh give him a shout out. Yeah. Tell him uh he did good. I, I, I enjoyed the interview. Even though yeah, I got caught up. Good. For sure. The kid did good. The kid did good. Young um, Dylan Sharp. <laughs> I don't I don't know if we're cutting it here, but um if we are, I just want to tell a story from this past weekend. Uh, I had an interaction with Gary Williams. Um I remember getting this text. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I may or may not volunteer with the Halifax Rain Men. Uh, I think I've probably hinted at that enough. So I was backstage getting – backstage. I was uh, in the arena getting my pass for the, the game on Saturday uh, that had 5,300 fans, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, biggest crowd of the year. Focus up, Sorry? Focus up. 
They're like 20 bucks. <laughs> support, support the local. Uh, <laughs> so I'm backstage getting my, uh, my pass, and all of a sudden I get put into a chokehold. And uh, the gentleman is not letting me go and screaming, is he tapping? Is he tapping? And it was the unmistakable voice of Gary Williams. So um, not that he will ever watch this, uh, but uh, thank you for that. That was very much appreciated. And my coworkers for the Rain Man did not know what to think. You'd be surprised. A couple of wrestlers backstage uh, last show said that they watched the podcast. So what? You'd be, you'd be surprised who watched I would. it. I honestly just think it's like my mother just refreshing the page like 70 times. <laughs> yeah. So what's your mom think of me and Justin? <laughs> she wishes that you guys were her sons and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Make me proud and wear your dad's sweater for God's sake. <laughs> um, so yeah, 2015. 2015. Any, any well, thoughts was- that we could see in Wrestle Center? Any, any bold predictions? Maybe uh, Cole Cabana comes back, finishes stuff up with uh, Tommy Starr. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Maybe he brings Luke Gallows or Cliff Compton, and we have a, have a little tag match. Wrestling Road Diaries 3. Starring you, Cliff, and Colt. <laughs> For sure. I'm, ho- I'm hoping that we get a tag team division going. Yes. yes. That's my wish. Wrestle Center needs it. The fans have been asking for it. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, if you listen to another podcast to, uh, last night, that uh, the owner of that company, that shall not be named, gives what, what gives what his fans want. Why can't we see the competition? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just go WWE Wrestle Center. <laughs> hey, ROH. Yeah, Star Ring of Honor. <laughs> yeah, you, we bumped you down a notch. Yeah. Um, no, for sure, the fans have been wanting it. And, uh, you know, I, I I can't see a problem with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe that's how I can make my debut. I was Let's just going to say, another wish of mine. The Italian flag in the background. You do like a Santino Morella type gimmick. Mamma mia. Just get out of here. Paul, you're number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, if, they, if I could make a debut in 2015, that would, uh, that would be sweet. Sweet. And then we can interview you. Your beginnings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, the day I get in the ring with you, I'm gonna kick you in the dick so hard it's not. Even- <laughs> I'm not. Get- I'm not laughing at the idea of you being interviewed. I'm laughing at the idea of how incredibly short that would be. Tell us about your debut match. Well, it just happened two days ago, and it was <laughs> super duper. You know, <laughs> it was swell. I it wrestled in New Minus in front of three people, um, and new two of them. I did not win. <laughs> I did not I did not win. So uh, next week we'll have Double XL on. Sweet. And that will be it for us for the year. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing uh, like a Christmas episode, like you could do a Christmas Day episode. I'll be I'll be back in I'll be back in uh, No, yeah, I'll still be here. So yeah, we can still do Should it. Are you be here on Christmas? Yeah. I work. I work. Well like, you know, I guess you can say you work. <laughs> we, yeah, dude works in the healthcare industry. He, is a, he works hard. He works hard. You work harder than members of our Royal Canadian Navy do. Well, let's quickly tell everyone uh, what do you do, Justin? Oh. <laughs> let's let everyone know what we do. Oh, okay. Um, I am in the Royal Canadian Navy. I am a naval electronics sensors naval electronics sensors operator. <laughs> Don't even know your own trade. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't say it properly. Um, naval electronics sensors operator. Tattooed on the back of his hand. They yeah. promoted your ass. I've got, um, I am. Um, in short, we use a uh, we use a passive radar that uh, we can detect signals, but it doesn't emit a signal itself. And uh, I operate the gun on the front the Gatling gun on the back, and the missiles. Cool. Paul? Uh, I, too, work for the Royal Canadian Navy as a maritime surface and subsurface officer. Uh, Justin and I may have deployed together last year for seven months in the Arabian Sea, so that was kind of cool. Uh, but right now, I am attached out to United Way Halifax campaign. Um, don't give till it hurts. Give till it feels good. United Way Halifax. You make Halifax greater. Probably a porn title. <laughs> Um, Until it feels good. <laughs> feels good. Uh, All Fotley Diaries. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the deployment, um, there may have been many a many of nights 
where he would run into the ops room and blatantly yell out, did you hear what happened on Raw last night? Yeah, oh, I was just having a good two hours. Of <laughs> yeah, a lot of the people would get annoyed with it, but you know, it's our passion. We love it. The, the way we, the way we actually started hanging out, the way we actually met was I was talking wrestling in the flats of the ship with a couple other of my friends. He walked by. He said, "You guys talking wrestling?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, and he just jumped right in. And it was it's not how we met. We met on Grinder. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just way off topic dave what do you do for a living i'm a nurse hey! <laughs> not as exciting as you guys i work hey. at a, a nursing home taking care of the elderly who have uh, dementia and other uh ailments i've been doing that for 21 years so man you can come you can come to the you can come to the i'll ship. take care of your guys <laughs> i'll take care of you old parts when you're yeah. old, <laughs> banged up from wrestling yeah <laughs> Um, my 2015 wish list is uh, is very short. I would like to see the debut of uh, young Diva Boyce, uh, Dave Boyce's daughter, who was at the last show. Uh, I think that's a character that uh, the fans would appreciate. That's so wrong, but it reminds me of a story. <laughs> the other day, I picked her up from. Uh, she works at. I'm old. No, I won't tell you where. No, she I don't. Is. Do I don't. But anyway, she said there was this creep, creepy guy kept staring at me. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, yeah, he's old guy. I said, well, how old? She said, well, you know, 30, which <laughs> yeah, makes I work with an older. I work with a 20-year-old, and I'm I'm only 28. And on a daily basis, I get the thanks dad comment yeah. for telling so, her to sit up straight and to put on a winter jacket. <laughs> anyway, the, the guy finally came up to her and he said, you know, I don't want to sound creepy. He said, but um, I seen you at the wrestling show last week. And she was like, yeah, and he's like, <laughs> your dad's the ring announcer, <laughs> and she's like, this is so lame. <laughs> oh, you're highly famous. Yeah, Hall of Fame. Awesome. Tell your, tell your daughter that's not lame. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, it's lame. That's well, that's terrifying that they're they're approaching his daughter because of his. <laughs> yeah, because well, of all, all they said was your dad's the announcer. It's not like he came up and asked for a phone number or something. Yeah. Um, but our fans are ridiculous because they voted for Tommy Starr as a runner up in one of the these awards. So I don't trust them around Diva Boyce or any other uh, respectable human being. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into a couple of fans up the mall today actually a couple of the guys that sit front row. Oh yeah. Chilling there. I was over there at Christmas shopping and I was like, hey we, guys uh, what happened to Fry guy? Is he still around? Is he still coming to the show? I said, yeah I think I've seen yeah, I called him out the last show actually I said there's a uh, the celebrity in the audience everyone Fry guy <laughs> And they all boot him. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I've uh, I have my first fan. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, during the intermission of the last show, uh, I came out to I can't remember why I came out to help one of the wrestlers bring their merch out or something. And um, you know, of course, I come out and still hold them in my stomach for what had happened. If you didn't see it, if you weren't at the show, watch Voltage. Um, was walking out and uh, a little kid came up and he said, uh, he said, I hope you are you okay? I said, oh, I'm stiff, it hurts, right? And uh, he said, well, when it happened, I didn't know what to do. Uh, he said, if I was me, I would have punched him in the face. And I was like, well, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't punch an MMA guy in the face. So uh, and he's like, well, tell your friend, I hope he's okay. His arm must be hurting. I said, yeah, well, he, he is backstage getting helped out right now. We run backstage and run back to uh, Brett, and it's like, we have our first fan. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Hey? We're, we're so time, lame. <laughs> I don't go out there to do those interviews or, like, contract signing segments. I don't get, like, you know, any niceties from the fans. I get, like, 15- and 16-year-old guys telling me my tie makes me look like a faggot. So, <laughs> <laughs> My wife just walked in the room when you said faggot, and she went, Mrs. Boyce! <laughs> Mrs. Boyce! <laughs> we want Cage. We want Cage. Uh, and we should have your wife as a guest one week, and we can delve into the life of Dave Boyce. No, you should listen to her her, her views and op or, uh, opinions of the show. They're hilarious. Yeah, she says. I would yeah. love to. It's yeah. funny. It's like, uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, no, no. The only time I ever had like a fan come up to me, uh, and I actually – tweeted about it like because I was like oh my god <laughs> um I was at the lower deck one night 
at the bar buying beer. <laughs> you're and this guy, old, you're a little old for the lower deck, aren't you? I had to take uh, my wife there. She she likes to hang out there. No. Um, anyway, this guy comes up and puts his arm around me. He goes, you're the Russell Center guy. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> Starts hauling out his sharpie to sign something. Yeah. Like he's right ready to go. Inside, but he took he took a selfie of the two of us, and I've That's never awesome. seen it again. So nice. That's awesome. That was that was my only uh, run in with a fan. Nice. Got a shout out from the rain man on the weekend during the game. I did. Got to count for something. Love Twitter. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, that's the end of it. Uh, the big winner, Double XL Wrestler of the Year. Congrats! And uh, Julian Young and Marcus Burke, best match of the year. I did right. Congrats, guys, for that. Hope you're watching. Uh, next week, Double XL will be here with us. If the fans have any questions, PM any three of us, not just me. I need to. <laughs> Don't just message Dave. Don't message us. You don't. <laughs> my little red flag was uh, like every day. I don't have my I don't have my kayfabe name on Facebook. Uh, I go by Dylan Sharp on Facebook. So <laughs> find me, add me, DM me. The question. <laughs> you wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so until that big interview, uh, that's it. Dave Boy signing off. Justin Parsons, Cody, Paul. Paul, uh, call me. Just Let's say Sean Ritchie. It's fine at this point. Yes! <laughs> yes! Take a shot. <laughs> Take a shot. It's the end of the year. We don't care. By the way, did not swear this episode. I swore it like two or three times. Yeah. You Everybody gets finger. a Dylan Sharp shirt for Christmas. Yeah, okay, I'll give the middle finger. <laughs> I froze off. I believe he also said dick. Is that swearing? No. This is a bond. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I thought Paul froze, but he's actually still with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, he's Did he fall just asleep. Now. He's like Homer Simpson's father. <laughs> he's <just laughs> he's All right, guys, Better that's right. it. Uh, comment on our podcast. Let us know if we're doing good or bad. We suck. We're great. Whatever. Yeah, let us know what you th- let us know what you want, and let us know. Uh, if you want us to add segments, if you want us to take away parts. Because we'd really like to get over 100 views. We yeah. really want to beat Promo Center at some point. So we're let close. us know. We're What's close. your opinion, Wrestle Center Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. See you next week. We are up.